Michael, you said you were not surprised at the desperation you guys showed in game three. What is the sense or the vibe you've gotten from your team over the last uh, day and a half? Yeah, I think uh, the vibe is uh, we're pleased that we're up 3-0, but we know that this team and that locker room is not just going to roll over. And uh, we talked about them being desperate in game three. There's going to be even at a higher level tonight. I, I think anytime you have a coach that has uh, a past with certain players, Obviously, uh, when you when you talk about Ryan uh, in this building, you think of his father, you know, Flip, and uh, his legacy, and uh, what he meant to so many people, and Ryan, you know, following in his footsteps, and um, got a chance to be the head coach here, didn't work out, and it was uh, an, an easy decision to bring him on board. You know, um, I've got a tremendous staff: uh, David Adelman, son of a Hall of Fame coach. Ryan Saunders, son of a legendary coach. So um, I think Ryan and DA's history with the T-Wolves and with guys like Carl and or Anthony, uh, that can only help you know shine some light on, on the best ways to try to attack them both offensively and defensively. Coach, you've broken down millions up and go, damn, that guy could play. And, and just catch yourself as a fan and forget that you're a coach sometime watching Anthony Edwards do what he's done, watching Nicola do what he's done the last couple of years, Jamal. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's hard not to. You know, um, I got into coaching because I love the game of basketball. You know, and I've been around it my whole life. And when you see greatness up close and personal, I've been really fortunate in my 20 plus years in the league to be around some of the greatest to ever do it. You know, you don't take that for granted. You appreciate it. And sometimes you do marvel at it. You know, this, you know, you look, talk about Anthony Edwards and. You know, this guy's what, 21, 22 years old? However, he's, you know, scary in terms of how talented he is and the potential that he has. And same thing with that group, you know, to see what Jamal Murray's been able to do, what Nicole's been able to do, what Michael Porter is doing. Um, I, I think sometimes it's not just X's and O's and I'm a coach, it's also I love this game and respect greatness when you see it. Michael, after um, struggling with Nicola off the floor like so much during the regular season, how, how big has it been to win those minutes like you guys have this series um, w when he has been off the court? Yeah, I mean, anytime you don't feel the need to rush Nicola back into the game or play him for 43, 44 minutes a night, that's going to bode well for us uh, in the moment, but also more importantly, big picture wise. Uh, you know, if we're able to move forward, you know, you don't want to overwhelm him every single night. Uh, and last game was a great example. He picks up his fourth foul halfway through that third quarter. And we were able to weather the storm, not even just weather it, but play well and sustain the lead until he's able to get back to start the fourth quarter. Um, obviously, we shortened that rotation. And everybody that's out there right now, those eight players have um, have all played at a high level and brought something to the game. And uh, that's been really fun to watch. If I could follow up on that, uh, Chris Finch just said that they were expecting to win or at least uh, compete in the minutes that Jokic was off the floor. Um, you guys kind of switching everything with AG has, has been a big factor in that. Was that something that surprised you guys? And is that adjustment of running a more switching defense, is that something you guys were kind of saving for you know the playoffs or a series like this? No, we've, uh, we've switched quite a bit this year. Um, obviously, we didn't play Aaron a lot as a backup five throughout the season. Um, but there were games throughout the year where obviously we were switching a lot one through four. And then if we played a small ball five like a Zeke, a Jeff, or an Aaron, we did switch quite a bit one through five. And um, we just feel that's one of the reasons we like using Aaron in that role because of the versatility. Um, he can black on the guards. And with that lineup, with having big guards out there, give them a lot of credit because they're switching on to much bigger players, but they are bringing the fight and the physicality, and that's what you need uh, if you're going to be an effective switching team. Coach, are you expecting more of the same from them at a higher level, or are you expecting them to make maybe some personnel changes, some X's and O changes tonight? Um, uh, we're expecting anything and everything. You know, when you're playing a team that is down 3-0, um, you know, that is a true definition of being um, desperate, urgent, and uh, I'm sure they're going to throw the kitchen sink at us. So what do we have to do? Uh, we have to be poised on the road. I felt there were times in game three we got a little rattled. End of quarters, we can finish a lot better. Turnovers can be a lot better. 
uh, getting organized and executing can be a lot better. And I felt out of the first three games, last game for me, Katie, was by far the least disciplined we were in terms of personnel and game plan. And so no matter what they do, we have to adhere to our rules, our game plan. And if we have to make an adjustment, we will, only, as, only after we ask ourselves, are we doing our game plan correctly and with great energy and effort? But uh, yeah, I expect everything tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, Coach, uh, in the first three games, if you could single out one thing that stands out that you've been most pleased with that you hope continues to carry into tonight, what would you single out? Oh, I would say overall just the defensive effort. You know, we've won the battle of the paint all three games. And, uh, you know, that's really big for us. Um, the second part of that would be we've won the rebounding battle all three games. And, and for us, both of those numbers mean something. Like, they are a direct correlation to us winning and winning at a high level. So if we're able to, regardless of who's out there, continue to win the battle of the paint and win the battle on the glass, you know, I, I think that will put us in a position to have a chance to win the game at the end.